everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here. Day three of CUBE's coverage. Two sets, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Third set, upstairs in the Executive Briefing Center. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante. Two other hosts here, a lot of action. Dave Vitteria here is the CEO of MongoDB. Exclusive post on SiliconANGLE for your prior to the event. Thanks for doing that, great to see you. Likewise, nice Thanks to see you both. On. See you, so it's great to catch up prior to the event for that exclusive story on uh, ecosystem, your perspective. That resonated with uh, a lot of the people, the traffic on that post and comments have been off the charts. I think we're seeing a ecosystem kind of surge and ch not changeover, but like a, an end, ISV end new platform. So I really appreciate your perspective. Um, as a platform ISV for AWS, what's it like, what's this event like, what's your learnings, what's your takeaway from your customers here this year? What's the most important story going on? Um, first of all, uh, I think being here is important for us because um, we have so many customers and partners here. In fact, if you look at the customers that Amazon themselves announced, about two-thirds of those customers are MongoDB customers. So we have a huge overlap in customers here. So just connecting with customers and partners has been important. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of them are thinking about their plans going to next year, so we're kind of uh, meeting with them to think about what their priorities are and how we can help. Uh, and also we're sharing a little bit of our product roadmap in terms of where we're going and helping them think through like, how they can best use MongoDB as they think about their data strategy you know, going to next year. So it's been a very productive event. We have a lot of people here, a lot, a lot of salespeople, a lot of product people, um, and there's tons of customers here. So we can get a lot accomplished in a few days. Dave and I always talk on theCUBE, well Dave always goes to the TAM expansion question, uh, expanding your total addressable market. The market is changing, and you guys have a great position, growing, positioned. How do you look at the total addressable market for Mongo, changing, where's the growth going to come from? How do you see your role in the market and how does that impact your current business model? Yeah, our whole goal is to really enable developers to think about MongoDB first when they're building modern applications. So what we've done is first built a first class transactional platform, and now we've kind of expanding the platform to do things like search and analytics, right? And so we're really offering a broad set of capabilities. Now our primary focus is the developer and helping developers build these amazing applications and giving them tools to really do so in a very quick way. So if you think about customers like Intuit, customers like Canva, customers like you know, Verizon, AT&T, um, you know, who are just using us to really transform their business, it's either to build new applications quickly, to do things at a certain level of performance and scale they've never done before, and so really enabling them to do so much more in building these next generation applications that they can't build anywhere else. So I was listening to McDermott, Bill McDermott this morning. Yeah. And you listen to Bill, you just want to buy from the guy, right? He's yeah. amazing. But he's basically saying, look, companies like, he was talking about ServiceNow that can help organizations digitally transform, et cetera, but make money or save money are in a good position. And I said, all right, Mongo's definitely one of those companies. Yes. What are those conversations like here? I know you've been meeting with customers. It's a different environment right now. There's a lot of uncertainty. I, I was talking to one of your customers said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up for renewal, I love Mongo. I'm going to see if they can stage my payments a little bit, you know, things like that. Are those conversations yeah, you know, similar to what you know, you're having? We, um, clearly customers are getting a little bit more prudent, but yeah. we haven't seen any kind of like slowdown in terms of deal cycles or, or elongated sales cycles. I mean, obviously, uh, different customers in different sectors are going yep. through different issues. Um, what we are seeing customers think about is like, um, how can I you know, either um, drive more efficiency in my business, like a par big part of that is modernization of my existing legacy tech stack, how can maybe consolidate to a fewer set of vendors, I think they like our broad platform story, you know, rather than using three or four different databases, they can use MongoDB to do everything, so that, that resonates with customers. Uh, and the fact that they can move fast, right? Developer productivity is a proxy for innovation. And so being able to move fast to either seize new opportunities or respond to new threats is really you know, top of mind for still so, every C-level executive. So can your software, I mean, you're right, consolidation is the number one way in which people are yeah. saving money. Can your software be deflationary? I mean, that, I mean that in a good way. So I was just meeting with a customer who was thinking about Mongo for their transactional platform, Elastic for the search platform, and like a graph database uh, for a, a special use case. And, and we said, you can do all that on MongoDB. And he's like, oh my goodness, I can consolidate everything, yeah. have one elegant developer in, interface, I can keep all the data in one place, I can easily access that data, and that makes so much more sense than having to basically use a bunch of piece parts. 
And so that's, that's what we're seeing more and more interest from customers yeah. about. So one of the things I want to get your reaction to is I was saying on theCUBE, now you can disagree with me if you want, but at, in the cloud native world at KubeCon, when Kubernetes was going through its hype cycle, the conversation went to, it's getting boring, and that's good, because they want it to be boring. They don't want people to talk about the runtime. They want it to be working. Working is boring, that's invisible, it's good. It's sticky, it's done. As you guys have such a great sticky business model, you got a great install base, Mongo works, people are happy, they like the product, so it's kind of working. I won't say boring, because that's it's relevant. What's the exciting things that Mongo's bringing on top of the existing base of product that is going to really get your clients and prospects enthused about the innovation from Mongo? What's what? Because it's it's almost like electricity in a way. You guys are very utility in, in the way you do, but it's growing. But is there an exciting element coming that you see that they should pay attention to? What's, what's your vision? Right, so if you look back over the last 10, 15 years, there's been big, two big platform shifts, um, mobile and cloud. I think the next big platform shift is from what I call dumb apps to smart apps. So building more intelligence into applications. And what that means is automating human decision making and in embedding that into applications. So we believe that to be a fundamentally a developer problem to solve. Yes, you need data scientists to build the machine learning algorithms to train yeah. the models, yeah. but ultimately you can't really deploy it at scale unless you give developers the tools to build those smart applications. That's what we're focused on. And a big part of that is what we call application-driven analytics, where people or, uh, can, can embed that intelligence into applications so that they can, instead of rather than having humans involved, they can make decisions faster, drive their businesses more quickly, you know, shorten time to market, et cetera. And so your strategy to implement those smart apps is to keep targeting the developer yes. and build on that base. Correct. And so, extend, extend exactly, it. so we want to essentially democratize the ability for any customer to use our tools to build those smart applications where they don't have the resources of a Google or you know, a large tech company, and that's essentially resonating with our customer base. We, we were talking about this earlier, after Swami's keynote is most companies struggle to put data at the core of their business. And I don't mean centralizing it all in a single place, there's data's everywhere, but, but really organizing their company and democratizing data so people can make data decisions. And so, I, I think what you're saying, essentially Atlas is the platform that you're going to inject intelligence into and allow developers to then build applications that are you know, intelligent, smart, with AI, machine intelligence, et cetera, and that's how the ones that don't have the resources of a Google or an Amazon become correct the, that kind of AI company. If and you that's will. that's the whole purpose of a developer data platform is to enable them to have the tools, you know, to have very sophisticated analytics, to have the ability to do very sophisticated indexes optimized for analytics, the ability to use data lakes for very efficient storage and retrieval of data. Uh, to leverage you know, edge devices to be able to capture and synchronize data. These are all critical elements to build these next generation applications, and you have to do that, but you, you don't want to stitch together a thousand primitives, you want to have a platform yeah. to do that, and that's where we really focus. You know, Dave, uh, Dave and I, three, two days, Dave and I, Dave Vellante and I have been talking a lot about developer productivity, and one observation that's now validated is that developers are setting the pace for innovation. Correct. And if you look at the, how they, the language that they speak, it's not the same language as security departments. Correct. They speak almost like different languages, uh, developer and security, and then you got data uh, language. But the developers are making choices. If it's self-service, they can accelerate. They're driving the behavior into the organizations. And this is one of the things I wrote about on Friday last week, was the organizational changes are changed because the developers are setting the pace. You can't force tooling down their throat, they're going to go with what's easy, what's workable. If you believe that to be true, then all the security is going to be in the developer pipeline. All the innovation will be driven off that high velocity developer cycle. We're seeing success of security being embedded there with the developers. What are you going to bring up to that developer layer that's going to help with security, help with maybe even new things? Right, so, um you know, it's, it's almost a cliche to say now software is eating the world, right? Because every company's value proposition is driven by software. It's either enabled, defined, or created through software. What that really means is that developers are eating all the work, right? And you're seeing, you saw in DevOps, right? Where developers basically encroached into the ops world and made infrastructure a programmable interface. You see developers, to your point, encroaching in security, embedding more and more security features into their applications. We believe the same thing's going to happen with data scientists and business analysts, where developers are going to embed that functionality that was done by different domains in the analytics world 
and embed that capability into apps themselves. So these applications are just naturally smarter, so you don't need someone to look at a dashboard and say, aha, there's some insight here, now I need to go make a decision. The application will do that for you and actually make that decision for you, so you can move that much more quickly to run your business either more efficiently or to drive more you know, revenue. Well, the interesting thing about your business is because you know, you've got a lot of transactional activity going on, and the data, st the way I would say what you just described is that the data stack and the application stacks are coming together. Yes. Right, and you're in a really good position, I think, to really affect that. You think about, we've, we've operationalized so many systems, we really haven't operationalized our data systems. And, and particularly as you guys get more into analytics, it becomes an interesting you know, roadmap for Mongo and your customers. How do you see that? Yeah, so I want to be clear, we're not trying to be a data warehouse. I get we're it. Not, we're yes. not trying to be like, you know, uh, go compete. In fact, we have a nice partnership with Databricks um, and so forth. What we're really trying to do is enable developers to instrument and build these applications that embed analytics. Like, a good analogy I'd use is like Google Maps. You think about how sophisticated Google Maps has, and I use that because everyone has used Google Maps. Yeah. Like in the old, I was old enough to print out the directions. Map Quest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put it on my lap and drive and look down. <laughs> now I have this device that tells me, you know, if there's a traffic, if there's an accident, if there's something, you know, going, it will reroute me automatically. And what that app is doing is embedding real-time data into, into its decision making and making the decision for you so that you don't have to think about which route to take. Right. You, you're going to see that happen across almost every application over the next X number of years where these applications are going to become so much smarter and make these decisions for you so you can just move so much more quickly. Dave, talk about the company, uh, what status of the company, your growth plans. Obviously, we're seeing a lot of news. Um, at Salesforce co-CEO just resigned. Layoffs at CNN, layoffs at DoorDash. You know, tech, unfortunately, is not impacted. Thank God, I'm not that too bad. Certainly, in cloud's not impacted. It is impacting some of the buying behavior. Uh, we talked about that. What's going on with the company, headcount? What's your goals? How's the team doing? What are your priorities? Right, so we, we're going after a big, big opportunity. You know, we recognize obviously the market's a little choppy right now, but our long term, we're very bullish on the opportunity. We believe that we can be the modern uh, developer data platform to build these next generation applications. Uh, in terms of costs, we're obviously being a little bit more judicious about where we're investing, but we see big, big opportunities for us. And so our overall cost base will grow next year. But obviously, we also recognize that there's ways to drive more efficiency. We're at a scale now, we're a $1.2 billion business. We're going to announce our Q3 results next week. So we'll talk a little bit more about you know, what we're seeing in the business next week. But we, we think we're a business that's growing fast. You know, we grew you know, um, uh, over 50%, 50 and so, so <laughs> we're, we're a pretty fast growing business. Yeah, you've and, seen, yeah, yeah, Tuesday, December 6th, you guys announced. Exactly. That is a big, we always watch and love it. So, so I'm, what I'm hearing is, you're not, you're not stepping on the brakes, you're still accelerating growth, but not at all costs. Correct, um, the term we're using is profitable growth. We want to you know, you know, drive the business in a way that we think um, continues to seize the opportunity, but we also want, we always exercise discipline. You know, I, I'm old enough where I had to deal with 2000 and 2008, so <laughs> you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not 28 and I've not seen these markets, and so obviously some are, you know, emerging leaders have not seen these kinds of markets before, so we're kind of helping them think about how to continue to be disciplined and I like I like that reference to 2000 dot-com bubble and the financial crisis of 2008. I mentioned this to you when we chatted. I'd love to get your thoughts now looking back for reInvent. Amazon wasn't a force in, in 2008. They weren't really that big debt yet. No economic impact, the agility wasn't hitting. They didn't hit that they didn't hit that cruising altitude of the value proposition of cloud. Agility, time to value, uh, moving fast. Now they are. So this is the first time that they're a part of the economic equation. You're, on the, you're on the, in the middle of it with Amazon. They could be a catalyst to recover faster if planned properly. What's your CEO take on just that general? And other CEOs might be watching and saying, hey, you know, if I play this right, I can leverage the cloud you know, Adam says lean into the cloud during a recession. Okay, I get that, but specifically, there might be a tactic. What's your yeah. view on that? I mean, what, what we're seeing the the hyperscalers do is really continue to kind of compete at the raw infrastructure level on storage, on compute, on network performance, on security, to provide the the kind of the building blocks for companies like MongoDB to really build on. So we're leveraging that price performance curve that they're pushing. You know, they obviously have talked about Graviton three. They're talking about their training model chipsets and their inference model chipsets and the security chipsets, which is great for us because we can leverage those capabilities to build upon that. And I think, you know, 
if you had asked me you know, in 2008, would we be talking about chipsets in 2022? I'd probably say, oh, we're way beyond that. <laughs> but what it really speaks to is those things are still so profoundly important. And I think that's where you can see Amazon and Google and Microsoft compete to provide the best underlying infrastructure where companies like MongoDB can build upon and we can help customers leverage that to really build the next generation of I'm not saying it's 2008 all over again, but we have data from 2008. That was the first major tailwind for the cloud. Yep. When the CFO said, we're going from CapEx to OpEx, so yep. we saw that. Now it's a lot different now, it's a lot more mature. I, I, think, I think there's a fine tuning trend going on where people are right sizing, fine tuning, whatever you want to call it. But it, a, a craft is coming, a, a trade craft of cloud management, cloud optimization, managing the cost structures, tuning, it's a crafting, it's more of a craft, it kind of seems like we're yeah, in that I'd, era. Yeah, I call it uh, cost optimization, that pe people are looking to say like, I know I'm going to invest, but I want to be rational and more thoughtful about where I invest and why, and wh with whom I invest with, versus just like, you know, just, you know, everyone getting a 30% increase in their OPEX budgets every year. I don't think that's going to happen. And so, and that's where we feel like it's going to be an opportunity for us. We've kind of hit escape velocity. We've got the developer mindshare. We have 37,000 customers of all shapes and sizes across the world. And that customer count's only growing. So we feel like we're a place where people are going to say, I want to standardize on MongoDB. Yeah, and so let's get a great quote in his keynote. He said, if you, you want to save money, the place to do it is in the cloud. You tighten the belt. Which well, belt are you tightening? The marketplace <laughs> belt? The supplier <laughs> belt? We had a whole session on that, <laughs> tightening your belt thing. Yeah. David Shear, CEO of a billion dollar company, uh, MongoDB, continue to grow uh, and grow and continue to innovate. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and thanks for participating in our stories. Thanks for really having me, it's great to be here. Okay, I'm Thank John Furrier, Dave Vellante, live on the show floor. We'll be right back with our final interview of the day after this short break, day three coming to close. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>